So Isaac, so today uh, we've had some very nice discussions and, and you've taught me a lot about, I think, three really kind of big ideas. And I think those big ideas are gravity, uh, quantum mechanics, and cosmology, or our, our whole universe. Uh, can you give me a short summary of these big ideas? Gravity is what happens uh, because of curved space-time. And so you can imagine space-time like a fabric, a fabric in our universe. And so, uh, if you put a mass on that fabric, then the fabric will bend around that mass. And now, of course, this is not fully accurate because we have a 3D space-time, but if you have, say, the Earth orbiting around the Sun, the Sun creates a very big hole in the fabric or a very big valley that the Earth can orbit around. The Earth makes its own hole that the Moon orbits around. And so, this is really an analogy of gravity. And how about quantum mechanics and cosmology? So quantum mechanics is basically what happens on extremely small levels. The uh, levels that are smaller than the than the impurities in my fingernails. And so uh, these uh, these things are so small things start to get fuzzy. You and you can't measure the position and the momentum of an object at the same time. You cannot know the exact position of something. We only have probabilities for where it might be and where it absolutely cannot be. Wow, amazing. And how about cosmology? And so for cosmology, cosmology is really the thing that sums it up our entire universe. And we don't really have an equation to describe all of it yet. That would be the theory of everything. And it would be kind of like uh, the jumbo field equation. So cosmology, especially in place in cosmology, describe where our universe came from, uh, how it is expanding, why it may be expanding, uh, and uh, some theories we have are dark matter and dark energy, and so what will happen to it in the future. And so uh, those are the three big concepts that we discussed about today. And I've gotten very big insights from you, Dr. Kabat. I, I have learned so much from you, and I uh, hope that you have learned at least something from me. Well, I've, I've learned a lot from you, and I wonder if you could tell me these ideas sound very exciting to me. What is it that you find exciting about these ideas? What makes you excited about science? I mean, a lot, I mean, a lot of people think that science was done. Science was done a long time ago. And that there's not much left to discover. But the thing is, there was so much more to discover. And just that that, that knowledge is getting harder and harder to find. And so I realized this for I realized this uh, property of science, and so I wanted to explore science to its fullest, even though I was uh, born a bit too late to explore the world in uh, the other ways and observe the world and do easy physics and still get credit for it. Every time I discover something new, it's just it's such an experience to me. For example, just uh, about a, a month ago, I uh, had my first look through a microscope and it was absolutely amazing. Even if I don't bring something new to the table, I am at least happy to be able to explore the realm of science. Oh, wonderful. And how do you, how do you learn about science? What, what do you think is the best way to learn about science? Well, a lot. I believe that um, a lot of people should use things like Google Scholar to get uh, get access to papers easily. And many people think that a quick Google search is often enough. And for big and for wider known things, I guess it is. Like who discovered black holes? Carl Schwarz. Carl Schwarzschild. Sorry, I can't pronounce uh, Russian names. Uh, but for more complicated and deep insights, things like that are just not enough. So I believe that one of the best ways to learn is uh, better sources on the internet, like papers or, Go or Google Scholar and reading from trusted sources. And I feel like one of the other best ways is to learn from books. 
uh, at, uh, at libraries or at, the sci at scientific libraries or maybe if you just want to get started with mathematics and science uh, the best place to get started is your own public library probably just go to the science section and start reading away I believe that that is a very important experience. You have, a, I believe that reading, not only uh, in person, but also online, is one of the best things you can do in order to improve scientific knowledge. Oh, that's excellent advice, and thank you, thank you very much for all of the knowledge, all of the advice, and, and all of the insight. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you, too. I, I cannot thank you enough and be so grateful for all your mentorship. Um, hopeful, and uh, once again, hopefully it will, won't be three years uh, before I see you again. I hope the same thing. All right. Thank you so much. Brought to you by Brilliant.org. The Bari Science Lab to fall in love with math and science. <laughs>